What's up, guys? Eric Sim 40T here with Eric's OC channel. Um, I just wanted to go through the uh, part two of how to set up your NASA MV2 flight controller DJI with your uh, Spectrum system, uh, and mine in particular is a DX7S. So first thing you're going to do, um, turn on your remote. Uh, go ahead and plug in your quad. Plug battery power into it. All right. And I'm just going to kind of run through everything on the uh, the menu here, and I'll tell you what my gains are and everything else, etc. All right. So if you watch part one of my video, um, you'll be able to you'll know what uh, how to set up your transmitter. So for part two, um, first thing I'm going to do for the channel monitor for all of these, you're going to want these to zero when you're not using them. Aileron elevator, you want right in the middle. Negative 1,000 is all the way down, and positive 1,000 is all the way up. Um, and then you got the U, X1, X2. Okay, so let me go right into, uh, we'll go straight in, we'll just go through. So for basic, of course I'm using quad, so I'm going to select quad rotor X, because I'm flying an X configuration, not uh, plus or I, I guess they call it on this. Um, let's go straight into mounting. Okay, so for mine, um, for GPS, I got three Y, three centimeters, X is zero, uh, Z is negative 14 centimeters, and with Z, is the higher you go up, the more negative this uh, value is going to get. So I recommend using like a dial caliper or a ruler or something and measuring and getting it pretty accurate. It doesn't seem to make too much difference if you're off by a little, but I would just try to be as accurate as I could. Um, so under RC, for receiver type, tradition, and it actually has the pinouts right there for you. Um, A E T R U. So that pretty much tells you how to lay it out with a, of course, Spectrum would be J R, Futaba, and uh, what is it? The Sony G9X would use the, uh, the Futaba setup there. Okay. Um, you're going to run through, of course, if you'd use my setup that I showed on my previous video, you're going to run all these normal. And it should be just like this. If you push throttle up, it should go that way. Um, rudder to the left should go to the left. To the right should go to the right. Elevator up should go up or to the right. And elevator down should go to the bottom or to the left. Aileron left, right should match. That's how it should work. Um, start the calibration. You will move your sticks all around in all the positions as far as they'll go. And that's pretty much where you end up with that. Um, for sticks monitor, this is just showing X1 and X2, your auxiliaries. I use, uh, what am I using here? Uh, gear for X2. And F mode, the top left front switch on the DX7S for U. And you can totally customize the way your channels, I mean, the way your switches are set up with different channels. So, And then for X2, I actually have my um, auxiliary 2 knob on the top right, which, uh, I'll use to control my gains. I'm not going to move that one yet because I have to lock down a setting. Um, if you watch my previous video, you can see on the bottom here, right now it's in attitude mode, the flight control control mode switch. So, um, and you're able to switch the bottom to, you could switch to manual or whatever you wanted to. But I just go to attitude. This is when none of my switches are activated. How I showed you to do the mix in the previous video where you get attitude, GPS, and failsafe on the two switches on the top, uh, top left. Um, so basically here's, uh, it without any switches turned on. Um, when I go flight mode on the top left, uh, to the on position, then I go into GPS mode. And that's what I showed you in the previous video. And when I turn on, um, when I flip the back switch gear to on, no matter if I'm in the GPS mode, it's going to go to failsafe. Or if I'm in attitude mode, that is also failsafe. And because off the grid, those last two blocks there are fail safe as well. So no matter what, I can have GPS on, fail safe, not on, attitude mode, still fail safe. So I'm good to go. That back switch, back left switch is always going to do fail safe for me. And uh, that's really important for me. Um, as far as gains, okay. Here's what I just got dialed in. You can see I'm using X1 here for vertical. I finally got that completely dialed in. I'm going to leave it exactly like that. That was my auxiliary 2 knob on the top uh, of the remote, top of the transmitter, and it's on the top right side of it. And I'm going to go back to 107, but I'll show you when you turn the dial. You can turn the dial and adjust your gains while you're in flight. So 
I'll go back to about 107. I know it was 107. Uh, you can also type them in manually, so it doesn't matter too much here. And I'm just going to go to inhibit that because I'm done with the vertical gain. I don't need to change that anymore. Um, so my gains are on the... Actually, I'm, using, I'm not using the HAL anymore. I'm using the F450 DJI frame. Um, pitch 95, roll 95%. Y'all 170, and that was because I had a little bit of uh, nose drift here and there, mostly to the left, so I had to up the uh, yaw gain. Uh, vertical gain 107%, and that's perfectly dialed in for me um, with 11 by 5 props um, as far as no uh, shaking or vibrations or oscillations when I'm, you know, launching. All the vertical gain really does is the higher you go, the more power it's going to give your motors. Everyone wants to say, you know, vertical gain is, oh, it just uh, changes how it comes down or it changes how it, it uh, holds its altitude. No, it doesn't do any of that. The only thing the vertical gain does as far as, like, thorough testing is when you turn the vertical gain up, it makes your helicopter take off faster. Much more acceleration. So you... If you go too much acceleration, you know, it's going to lean to one side. It's going to jerk around. So I just, just dialed it in just perfectly to where it it uh, it lifts very evenly and very smoothly. Um, as far as attitude gains, I just went uh, 105, 105. It works just perfect for me with the 11. The, keep in mind, 11 by 5 props. So if you have smaller props, you're probably going to have to uh, increase these gains. Probably all the way around, but um, the 11 by 5s work just so perfectly for me. I'm not going to switch them. All right. So as far as motors, um, this is the idle speed. So when you act, when you uh, turn on your motors uh, into idle mode, all you got to do really is uh, throttle down all the way and rudder to the right, and then elevator down all the way and then uh, aileron to the left. So basically, the two inner corners you push the sticks in, it'll activate the mode if you're intelligent. Um, if you're an immediate, no, I'm sorry, that's cut off. Um, intelligent, it won't cut it off like if you're in the air or something, if you do it by accident, which I don't see how you could anyway. And uh, if you have immediate, it will cut it off immediately. Um, the idle speed is just uh, how fast the motors are going to idle while they're while, you, while you've activated the motors. That's about it. Um, keep I just keep it recommended, and it works just fine. Um, fail safe, I got a go home and landing. It actually works really well. Uh, I don't use intelligent orientation control because it really throws me off. Um, on multiple fronts with these different orientations and trying to fly like that and get used to it. You know, I, I uh, started off flying 3D helis and stuff, so uh, these kind of things right here really mess me up. I just, I'm not even going to go into it. I just don't like it. Gimbal, I don't have one right now, so I'm just not messing with that. It's off. All right, so voltage. Uh, depends on your what you want or how, how far you want to run down your battery. Um, so obviously it's reading my current voltage right there at 12.5, which is probably very accurate. This battery was just charged. Um, a three cell I'm using. Um, first level I got 10.6 at a loss. I got 0.8 volts and 9.8 volts loaded. Uh, what this means is if, uh, okay, so no load. I'm just sitting there basically no load at all. Um, if it gets down to 10.6 volts, it's going to flash the indicator. Um, and this is a 0.8 volt voltage drop with the losses here. So if it gets down to 9.8 volts um, with the 1 volt 8.8 volt loss, which it's not going to when it's in um, it's there's no load, it's not going to have a voltage loss like that. 9.8 it would indicate if it was loaded on the first level of protection. So First level, it just blinks a warning. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't make you come down. It doesn't decrease motor power. It doesn't do anything. So if I have a voltage drop of 0.8 volts while it's flying and loaded, basically flying, uh, if it gets down to 9.8, it's going to flash the, the LED warning. Second level protection, and this, this level makes you come down. It'll slowly decrease the power. You will drop. Uh, it's still very controllable. And you want to just keep it uh, above your ESC's cutoff voltage. Otherwise, you're just going to drop like a rock. Um, second level protection, I got 10.4 with no load. So if it's just sitting there in 10.4 volts, it's going to, uh, it's not going to descend because I'm not doing anything. Um, with a 0.8 volt loss, that's kind of what I went with there. The 0.8 volt, the 
because the voltage drop can, um, depending on your, your LiPo you're using, if it's a, a really high output, say like a, a 45 to 90C or something like that, Turnigy, uh, the Turnigy Nanotech, a couple of those, um, it, you might have to decrease this number. Um, as far as being loaded, if it's at 9.6 volts and loaded on the second level, it's going to descend. So I'm never going to get below 9 volts. And that you want to keep your, your uh, 3 cell lipos above 9 volts. 3 volts a cell, if it's a 4 cell, you want to keep it above 12 volts. Um, and that's about it for this part. Let's move on to limits. Uh, and this is completely customizable. And uh, your helicopter will basically return within range if you exceed these numbers. And I was being very conservative with the height. You can go so much higher than that. Um, I just put 200 meters just because I don't want to interfere with the uh, aircraft traffic. They shouldn't go below 1,000 feet, I don't believe. But just in case, 200 meters is my max height. Uh, max radius, 1,500 meters. I could go a lot more than that. Yeah, um, I just did that for initial stuff. You can change it to a lot longer range and stuff like that if you want to. So here you have the uh, IMU calibration. If you want to calibrate your, um, basically you're just going to press basic calibration when the quadcopter is just sitting on a level surface and you're ready to just calibrate it, kind of basically. Um, I don't mess with advanced calibration, just no need. Uh, okay, well as far as the rest of it, uh, the current firmware is uh, 4.02 and that's really just about it for this. So I hope that's a pretty basic, good overview. Um, if you want... Let me go back into like the very beginning where say you want to just get it, uh, your NASA, uh, assistant software installed and driver installation. Just, uh, run, when you download the, uh, files, the NASA files from the, uh, DJI website, I believe it is, um, just, uh, run the installers for all the drivers, everything else. Then you're going to want to plug in your, uh, quad to the computer, turn on your remote, and plug in your quad's battery, and that's the only way you're going to be able to adjust anything is if the quad's battery is plugged in. It's not like the multi-Wii or anything to where you can just plug in the multi-Wii with the USB cord and it powers up on its own and you can configure it. Um, and that's really it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Watch part one if you haven't, and I'll see you guys around.